The woke City of Melbourne Council has voted to establish a First Nations Advisory Committee to ensure their voices and aspirations are embedded in the Council's core business and decision making. Uh, Caleb, look, 60% uh, of us, as we all know, voted no to the referendum for an Indigenous voice to Parliament, yet we've got one council going on a rogue path and doing it anyway. Amazing, isn't it? And South Australia is about to have elections for their uh, voice to parliament down there as well. So the city of Melbourne's not the only mob that uh, that hasn't caught on to the national sentiment. Um, it, you feel day by day that maybe Darren Hinch, who's put his hand up to run for, yes. uh, for the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, even at the age of 80, mm. could perhaps do a better job than this mob. But... I reckon there could be value in this thing. And, and hear me out, because, of course, what they're saying is we need this thing to advise us on our, our business and how it relates to Indigenous people. And, of course, we know everything relates to Indigenous people because Indigenous people pay rates, they have their bins emptied, etc. Yes. So what we really need hmm. is for this mob to go in and say to the City of Melbourne, look, your council exists on stolen land, therefore the council is an illegitimate body and it should be oh, wound up. I and mean, if they what did a revelation that, that would be. I would be in full support. <laughs> Anything that might lead to the abolition of a council, I am totally on board Mate, with. I love, I love practice, the sentiment. Practice what you preach. Because practice the, what you preach. That's what we've been talking the, about all night. The councillor who put up this motion yes, said that yes. they were on unceded land. Well, so this is the thing. Get rid of the council. Get rid of the council. I mean, that might solve all the problems because I've got to say, Lisa, why don't these councils just stick to their day jobs? Whatever happened to roads, rubbish and rates? Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of uh, residents in the city of Melbourne who are thinking, you know, I have the odd pothole in my street over here that could do with fixing as opposed to putting time and money into creating this body that, yes, hello, you know, the majority of Australians said, no, we don't want this. But the problem is, as Caleb said, what we're going to see are all of these councils, which we know overstep the mark, you know, when you talk about gender issues, when you talk about climate change, when you talk about the positions on gas, you name it, the, the list is as long as it's a laundry list. Mm. We're going to see this pop up around the country. And then, of course, you've got what's happening at the state level as well. So we've got a, a big year here in Queensland. We've got uh, council elections this month. We've got a state election. And, of course, there's the date of when the federal election will be. So it will be very interesting to see how electorates respond when they're starting to see our elected officials uh, focus on, on these sorts of issues and do exactly the opposite to what the majority of Australians voted for. Correct. 60% of us said no. Now, former Australia Post head Christine Holgate claims that criticism of high-profile women like former Optus boss Kelly Bayer-Rosemarin put women off taking on top jobs. Lisa, where do you stand on this? Yeah. Because in the end, if you're a leader, you're going to cop criticism no matter what because the buck stops with you. How do you... Do you agree with these comments? What do you think? No, look, I sat through... I was lucky enough to sit through a keynote from uh, Christine Holgate about a year ago, and she very clearly makes the point that there will be criticism along the way and what both men and women need to be is resilient. And I think that's the message mm. that isn't getting through. We're so fast to sort of put women out there as being the victims or being criticised. You're right. If you're going to put your hand up and be in a senior leadership position in a, in a corporate or if you're going to put your hand up and be a politician, you are going to cop criticism. There's no way around it, and that's whether it's male or female. So I think it's time to take gender out of this yes. and actually assess people on their ability. It's not a place for quotas. It's not a place for crying, I'm a woman, you know, I'm being picked on. It's what Christina Holgate says, be resilient. Yeah, absolutely. And this is a thing, Christine Holgate, Caleb's talking about women in these senior positions, but I'd argue that men in mm. high-profile positions have also faced scrutiny. Yeah. scrutiny. I mean, look at Brad Banducci a couple of, of weeks ago with Woolworths. Yeah, indeed. And, uh, look, I've got a bit of sympathy for Christine Holgate. I think she was hard done by at Australia Post. Mm. Um, but, again, that had nothing to do with her being a woman. It was just that the Morrison government thought it could mm. score political points by hanging her out to dry for those Cartier watches that were given yes. as bonuses to staff. They thought you know, it would be a good cost of living story. I think she was a bit hard done by for that. But to use the example of Kelly Bayer Rosmarin, the former boss of Optus, I mean, the way she handled uh, what happened when the Optus the network outage. went down and, mm. you know, told people to go on the internet to find out what was going on when they couldn't use the internet <laughs> because Optus was down, yeah. it was just a poorly handled situation. Mm. It's got nothing to do with whether you are a man or a woman. Mm. Now, sure, we might have had a few examples recently where women have done a bad job of running a company and they've been rightly dragged for it. Sure. It's got nothing to do with what 
what was between their legs. They just did a bad job. Correct, exactly. And as I said, the buck stops with you. If you're the, are you the leader, you're the head of your company, that's just the way that it goes. Now, look, this is an interesting one because Virgin Active is said to be, Virgin Australia rather, is said to be the first airline in Australia to allow pets to ride inside the cabin on domestic flights starting from next year. The airline is desperately trying to improve its brand image. And what better way to do it than using cute and fluffy animals in its marketing campaigns? Lisa, would you be happy to be sitting next to somebody's pet? Oh, look, I struggle. I have children. I, I've travelled with children, young children, but I struggle sometimes. You know, when you're sitting there and you see the baby coming up the aisle and you think, oh, please, not next to me. So I'm not convinced <laughs> I'd be overly happy if there was a cat or a dog shoved under the seat next to me or behind me. So, mm -hmm. no, look, but what I think this is is marketing, and you're absolutely right. It's about trying to win mm -hmm. over some Australians. And if you ask the people who have had flights cancelled or flights delayed, they would say that our airlines have gone to the dogs a long time ago. <laughs> Good so one. It'll be interesting to see how... Yeah. I, oh, yeah, it was the afternoon. As, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But, no, look, I don't think I'd be particularly happy with it, to be well, honest. Well, I, I agree with Lisa. I mean, I, I cringe when you've got a screaming child sitting next to you. What about a barking dog for a few hours? Well, I, I think that's kind of the argument in favour of it, isn't it? I mean, you know, if you've already got the screaming child, what's it adding a dog into the mix? Does it really so got a make child and a dog a and it's just a complete mm. nightmare well, I, I think I'd be more sympathetic towards the dog than the child, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. I mean, look, I, I've got cats, so... I don't think I'm going to be taking You're my cat take on. Your cat on. I don't think I'm going to be taking my cat on holiday with me any time <laughs> soon. But I feel so sorry for them because I moved into state a few times and I had to take a cat into state. And the poor bugger, he's in the cargo hold in the back Aww. of the plane, flying from Sydney to Adelaide. You know, Aww. it must be a terrifying experience. Just something to make it a little. Well, now you can put him them. under the seat in front of you. Exactly, and he knows you're yeah. there. What's the big? Yeah. They've been doing it in the US for years without much complaint. I don't really see the big deal. Oh, OK, fair enough, fair enough. Caleb Bond, yeah. Lisa Goddard, great to speak with you both. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and we'll see you soon as well for the Late Indeed. Debate, Caleb.